Welcome to Lovers of Jesus Ministries International. The message you are about to hear is from the Lord's anointed, Dr. Edward Irobi, the man with the mandate to proclaim the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and to raise an army for the Lord in this end time. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. You are welcome to our Bible study today. I want to let you know how excited I am once again to bring forth the word of the Lord. I am bringing forth the word of the Lord today. Today will be the last Sunday, the last Sunday for us to discuss consecration of the body. And I know that the Lord has blessed you so much since January we started this discussion. As I have been saying, I'm so much blessed to have all of you as part of my life. Why am I saying I have you as part of my life? No matter how hard the Lord was using his word to bring this message of consecration home to us, we said we are not going to back out. We are going to stay for the Lord to perfect his work in our lives. This is the type of character that the Lord wants from each of us as you are waiting for his return. I want us to open with a word of prayer and I will introduce today's uh, message. Shall we pray? Eternal Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come that will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. Father, we pray that you open our eyes that we may behold one gross things out of your holy world. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, once again, I want to welcome you to our Bible study. For four months right now, we have been exploring the topic that says consecration of the body. We have touched so many subtopics. And time will fail me to begin to highlight some of them. You know, some of them in includes uh, myths about body consecration, truth about body consecration, breaking down altars of idols and deliverance from idols on the altar, among other sub and sub subtopics we explored. Today, we want to round up, as I informed us, because after today's study, next week, we are proceeding to another exciting topic. Very, very interesting. You see how that topic will, will bless us as this one has blessed us too. We shall be exploring consecration of the soul. I just wanted to give that so that uh, that information so that you begin to anticipate for next week's uh, discussion. Consecration of the soul. We have to delve into several components of the soul. Emotion, the mind, the will, among other components of the soul. And how God wants these aspects of our lives to be consecrated unto him for him to do what he wants to do. Remember the purpose of the Lord. The Lord wants us to be consecrated because of his end time plan. And that brings us to the issue of timing. When we are talking about timing, some minutes ago, you know, before we went on air, I discussed with you about timing that we have been experiencing in our generation. How time flies. You gave me scenarios about timing. But right now, I want to let you know, recently, the Lord gave his servant a revelation about timing. And that revelation maybe is going to help you to understand why we are studying what we are studying. Because there is no more time left. We are in what some people may call injury time. You know, footballers during their play, you know, they will get to a particular play time. They say, this is injury time. In the world of humans, we are in injury time. Time has finished. We are having extra minutes. I don't know whether it's up to two minutes before the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ, will come to rapture the church. So as I was uh, saying before, the Lord Jesus took one of his sons to glory and said, Hey, daughter, 
I want to tell you something very, very important. And the Lord presented two clocks, one on the left hand and one on the right hand. And he said, you see this one on the left hand? It's already 12. It's already 12. The time is 12. And you see, the one on the right. Why is it that I have the one on the right? Because the father, this happened to be the father's time, that it's time to go and uh, bring in the harvest, to go and bring the saints to glory. It's time for the rapture. The rapture time is on right now. But the Lord Jesus started pleading, telling the father, how many will be saved? If I will go and uh, reap the harvest, send my angels to go and bring my people to glory. How many of my people are going to be raptured? How many are ready in their world? And he pleaded with the father. And the father gave him another clock. And looking at the clock, few minutes to 12 midnight. Few minutes to 12. And the message has been, go and tell my people, I will come suddenly as a thief in the night. Go and tell my people to get ready. That's why the mandate the Lord has given to us in this ministry is what? Keeping the church ready for the rapture. Walking in holiness, walking in purity, passing ourselves through the narrow path. And that takes us to our discussion today. We have studied so much about consecration of the body. Today we are finishing it with a topic that says staying clean after deliverance. Now we have been delivered. All the idols gone. We have renounced them. We have confessed and asked God for forgiveness. And the Lord has said, hey, my children, you are forgiven. You are clean. You have been purified. Now the question comes, how can I stay clean? How can I maintain my chastity, my spiritual chastity, my spiritual purity, my spiritual holiness? How can I ensure that my garments are not spotted? That's what we want to discuss within 20 plus minutes right now. Please, I want you to go along with me. We cannot exhaust this discussion right now. If you have time, you have my information, you can contact me and we can discuss more, all right? So, I'm going to take this discussion from two subtopics, two subtopics that will help us to appreciate what the Lord is speaking to us today about this topic. The first topic will be, you are clean. Don't allow the unclean spirit back. Did you hear that? Now we are clean. We have petitioned the Lord. We have been crying. We have been wailing. We have been saying, Lord, remove this idols from me. Lord, I don't want anything to do with vanity. And the Lord said, okay, son. Okay, daughter. I have heard you. I have cleansed you. I have purified you. I have sanctified you. Now you are on you are on your way to heaven holy. The Lord is now saying, now you are holy. Don't allow the unclean spirit of vanity to come back. Don't allow all those things that you threw away to come back. That's one of the ways to stay clean after your deliverance. You may say, how can we get these things together? We, we shall explore. And after 
this topic of uh, you are clean, don't allow the unclean spirit back. We are going to look into the second topic that says important choice to make. Important choice to make after deliverance. The important choice the Lord wants us to make here is provoking the king. Provoking the king of kings, the Lord of lords. I will bring to our understanding how we can provoke him negatively and how we can provoke him positively. Then after that, we shall have the conclusion. All right? So I want you to hang around here with me. Let's see how the Lord will bless us with all this uh, information. All right? I want us to go to the word of the Lord in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 14 to 17. I read the word of the Lord. Under the topic that says, you are clean. Don't allow the unclean spirit back. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So this is what the Lord is calling the church unto. The Lord is saying, hey, you are clean. I have called you to myself. Remember, after you are deliverance, you have been separated unto the Lord. You don't belong to the enemy. No need of obeying the propensities and uh, adhering to the idols that we are on the body. We have to recognize our new life in Christ. We are separated. The Lord said, Come out among them and be ye separate. Knowing that we are separated unto the Lord, the Lord wants us to make sure we have a resolute decision, 360 degrees, not to go back to where he brought us out from. We are going to see that later on when we are going to discuss, uh, you know, how to provoke the king. So let me not uh, uh, touch that right now. So in respect to this um, subtopic, I want us to go to the book of Matthew again. I want us to go to Matthew chapter 12 and uh, see the information our Lord Jesus Christ presented about somebody that was possessed who later became clean who later became delivered. Remember, we were just like this man. We were engulfed. We were saturated with idols. And now we are free. The Lord has delivered us. The Lord is giving us this charge. This is the charge from the King of Kings himself. Go with me. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 from verse number 43. I will read 43 to 45. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, this is very, very important. Remember, the unclean spirit of vanity, the unclean spirit of idols that we highlighted, they are now gone. We are delivered. We are separated. We are clean. The Lord wants us to know how to maintain this clean house, to maintain this clean body that is the temple of the Holy Spirit. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. 
And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. This is a very, very big issue. That's why it's not good for you to backslide. That's why it's not good. It's not even, uh, uh, you know, something to think of. To leave the path of righteousness because we have an enemy who is seeking an opportunity to hold us back so that we will not go back to the righteous path of the Lord. And that's what the enemy does whenever anybody who has been in Christ Jesus drifts away. It takes extraordinary power of God to deliver such one because the enemy will bring more unclean spirit. The Bible says seven more deadly unclean spirit. That's why we have to watch carefully. We have to guard jealously the deposits, the new life the Lord has given to us after our deliverance so that the enemy will not have any loophole. Now, let me tell you something. That's about the unclean spirit coming into the house, well garnished, empty. Somebody may ask, may ask, but what will be the opposite of this? We shall find out. The opposite of this will be if the house is occupied by holiness, by purity, by righteous deeds, by the word of God. Now the unclean spirit will not have any place to occupy. So that is what the Lord is telling us. Don't allow yourself to be empty after your deliverance. Or else the unclean spirit will occupy the empty space. Make sure your heart is on the Lord. Make sure you are maintaining your work having time with the word of God, having time with prayer, having time with fasting, having time with evangelism, having time with all the activities that will make you occupy. Mm -hmm. You will not be empty. When the enemy comes, he will say, oh, the spirit of the Lord's presence is there. There is no way. And the enemy will back out. Because when the clean spirit comes in, it's empty and garnished. He will come in. And then you begin to say, ah, I thought that this person is a believer. His life is not, you know, exemplifying that of a Christian because he allowed the enemy to have a loophole and the enemy brought more deadly demons that are making his or her life the way it is right now. So I want you to go with me to the book of um, John chapter 5. Let's check out another man, another man, an impotent man, and the Lord Jesus warned him. Almost the same message. The Lord Jesus warned him and said, Hey, 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 man, you are healed right now. I have healed you. Make sure you do good. Make sure you do what I have informed you in my holy word so that the worst will not come out, so that the worst will not befall you, so that you will not go back to where I brought you from. The book of Mark, uh, John chapter 5. You know this story very well. The man that was at the pool of Bethesda. I read the word of the Lord, John chapter 5. This is a long passage, but I need to finish it so that you get that message. And then we go to point number two, provoking the king. All right? After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five pouches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind heart, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. And a certain man, the Bible says, a certain man 
was there which had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? We have already answered this question. We told the Lord, yes, we wanted to be made whole. Now we have been made whole. The Lord wants us to maintain this clean body because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Verse number seven. The impotent answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, that while I am coming, another step down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. Let's see whether he did. Oh, verse number nine. And immediately the man was made whole. That's how we were made whole. We have confessed our sins of harboring idols. And the Lord has rescued us. The Lord has delivered us. Now the Lord is charging us. Now we have been made whole. We need to take heed to something that will help us to maintain our clean situation. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is a Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Hmm. Let's see what the Lord Jesus informed this man. He answered them, He that made me whole, uh -huh. the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then I say him, What man is that which made thee whole? which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk. And he that was healed was not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, I want you to mark verse number 14. That's the takeaway verse here. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, this is the message the Lord is giving to you and giving to me. Behold, Thou art made whole. Sin no more. Lest a worse thing come unto thee. The Lord has forgiven us of harboring idols. We don't have to go and pull them back again. We don't have to go and get them again unto ourselves. The Lord says, hey, you are now make whole. You are whole. Make sure. Make sure. You will sin no more. Don't touch the idols. Lest a worse thing come unto thee. That's the consequence of not giving up completely. Remember what the Lord informed us some weeks ago? The Lord does not want 99.9. .9. The Lord wants 100% of us. We say, Lord, help me. And the Lord will help us. Now, we are going to point number two. We are almost getting done, right? We are going to point number two. Point number two says, important choice to make, provoking the king. You know, here we are talking about the Lord God Almighty being our king. Because immediately one gives his life to the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus becomes your king. Yes, he is the king of kings. You know, all of us are kings unto the Lord, but the master is overall king of kings kings. So now being our king, being the king of our lives, you know, we are part of his heavenly kingdom. Now, he wants to inform us, now you are clean. Your attitude could make the king either provoked negatively or positively. I want you to hear this message very, very, very well. The Lord gave me this message this afternoon. I never wanted uh, you know, um, additional information like this. I just received this message, provoking the king. So now the Lord wants to communicate to us, now you are clean. You can provoke the king negatively or positively. And let's define the word provoke, to provoke. Let's see what Merriam Webster Dictionary says. To provoke means to call forth a feeling 
or an action. Now, Merriam-Webster's dictionary also says to stir up purposely. Then there is another dictionary definition uh, for this word. And that meaning has, uh, has it to be to cause a particular reaction or feeling. So, as a believer who is free from idol, the Lord is saying, you are action can cause a particular feeling. It will make the Lord to feel in a particular way. You are action that is presented to the Lord. Each new day you walk before him could be a, could, you know, provoke what I call negative provocation or positive provocation before the king. Let's see how the negative provocation could come. You know, I want to use the life of a woman all of us are aware of to discuss this. After that, I'll pick up another character, a, a man, and then we summarize, all right? So there was a woman that the Lord delivered from destruction, just like the Lord has delivered us from idolatry. The Lord delivered that woman. The Lord delivered the husband. The Lord delivered the two children, the two daughters. But the woman still held back memories about idols, about the former life. And uh, that was contrary to the warning the angel of the Lord gave to her and her family. Because when this woman was being delivered with her family, the angel of the Lord said, hey, don't look back. Just like us, we are now delivered. We have been rescued from all the idols that the enemy used in holding us in captivity. The Lord is saying, hey, my children, don't look back. We are talking about Lot's wife. Lot's wife. In the ancient city of Sodom, the righteous man Lot and his family were warned by angels of God to flee the city before its destruction. You know the story very well. That's why I'm saying you can provoke the king negatively or positively. Now, Lot's wife provoked the king of kings negatively through her life of disobedience because she did not absolutely let go all the idols that she left behind in Sodom. Oh, how I wish somebody will understand what the Lord is saying here. Hmm? Lot's wife couldn't resist the urge to glance back at that city which was living behind which she was living behind as a consequence of her disobedience she was transformed into a pillar of salt the lord said hey escape to this mountain don't look back and she turned back and she had her judgment instantaneously this tale serves as a cautionary reminder about the consequences of clinging to the past of worldly attachment. All those idols that the Lord has delivered us from, the Lord does not want us to cling onto them. Don't touch all those things the Lord has delivered you from. All those attachments, all those artificial products that the Lord said, get rid of them. The Lord does not want you to have anything to do with them anymore. You are free. Any idol on the body that the Lord has delivered you from, don't touch them. Look at Lot's wife, what happened to her. And the Lord does not want this to be our portion. That's why this warning is coming. We can see this thing from the word of the Lord in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19, I read the word of the Lord from verses 19 to 26. Behold now, 
Thy servant had found grace in thy sight. Lord, talking to the angels, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. 23. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot escaped into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Don't look back. The consequences are so high. The last character before we pray. Just hang in there. The last character before we pray. Now we have seen the negative way. Provoking the king negatively. By looking back. By going back to the idols where the Lord brought us from. Now the Lord wants to tell us. You can provoke me positively. Let's go to the word of the Lord in the book of Jeremiah chapter 35. Jeremiah 35. I will not finish reading them. You are going to read about the Rechabites. I want to give you a little synopsis about these people. I love this family so much. And the Lord spoke good concerning them. Because the Lord was provoked positively through their lifestyles. Rechab, Rechab informed the son Jonadab and the Pass it through his family, uh, uh, you know, throughout their generation that, hey, do not allow your children to drink alcohol. Do not allow them to drink strong drink. And Jonadab instructed the children. And they continued to pass this instruction until the time when Jeremiah was instructed by the Lord to visit the family. And uh, the Lord said to Jeremiah, go and give them strong drink. Go and give them wine to drink. But they did not drink. They said, no, 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 no. We are not, no matter you are a prophet of the Lord, we are not going to drink. They, Jeremiah said, why will you not drink? And they started recounting that, hey, Rechab, our grandfather, told our father, Jonadab, that none of his children should even drink any alcohol. In short, including, we have to live in intent. We don't have to build fanciful buildings. We have to know that we are tent dwellers. Hey! And the Lord said, Jeremiah, look at the children of Judah. Look at the children of Israel. I have been sending prophets. I have been warning them. They don't want to hear the voice of the Lord. But look at the family of Rechabites. How the children of uh, Jonadab obeyed their father. They kept the instruction of a man, but the children of Israel, they don't have my fear to keep my instruction. In blessing, I will bless Jonadab. Jonadab will not lack a man that will stand before the Lord. That's the end of the message. That's the positive way of provoking the king. Do you what the king wants us to do? Let's read two verses from that. You can read the rest. Jeremiah chapter 35. From verses 30, from verses 1 to um, 19. I will read 18 and 19, and then we conclude. Just hang in there with me. And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus sakes the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father, and kept all his precepts, and done according unto all that he had commanded you. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, 
Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall not want a man to stand before me forever. Kai, this is amazing. That this man will not lack a man to stand before the Lord forever. That's the blessing. What's the blessing the Lord wants to give to you before we pray? The Lord wants to give you a blessing for being a faithful servant, for leaving all idols, forsaking them, and maintaining your focus on him. Hear this final message before we pray. Ephesians chapter 3, 20 to 21. Ephesians chapter 3. 20 to 21. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The Lord is able to do it. Let's continue to put our trust in him and he will strengthen us. He will continue to keep us until the day of his coming. And no idol will surface anymore in our lives. Shall we pray? Eternal Heavenly Father, we worship you. We hallow your holiness. We thank you for touching our lives, O oh God, through your word. Your word is true, Father. We want to stay cleaner. We don't want to go back to the place where you brought us from. Therefore, Father, we call upon you, O oh God, to help us. We know it's not by might nor by power. But by your spirit, uh, eternal spirit of the Lord, help us. I pray that by the power of your word, by your grace upon our lives, we'll continue to walk on the narrow path and we will not go back to where you brought us from. And all glory and all honor will be ascribed unto you, immortality that dwells in unapproachable light, our heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, thank you for your time that you have spent hanging around here with us today. We look forward to meeting with you next week Sunday. Remember next week Sunday, the Lord is going to help us to start off a new series, Consecration of the Soul. I look forward to meeting all of you next week Sunday. God bless you. Bye-bye. We believe you have been blessed by this message. Please join us every Friday for our Revival Prayer Meeting and on Sunday for our Bible Study. You can also follow us on Facebook at Lovers of Jesus Ministries International. For prayers and answers, please call plus 1-4705-401784. You can also visit us on our website at www.lgmhi.net. Remain blessed. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus.